Sean, more changes were announced to the Canada Emergency Response Benefit yesterday in an effort to help students through this difficult time. Here to break it down for us is financial expert Leslie Ann Scorgi. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being with us. So students are now eligible for some money every month from May to August. Tell us more about this. It's very welcomed news. Students were falling through the cracks with the initial CERB coverage. So now students are eligible for the Canada Emergency Student Benefit. It ranges from $1,250 per month to $1,750 per month. If you're caring for somebody who is sick or you're disabled, you would get that, that uh, larger amount. This is all very good news. The other thing I just want to point out is if you had secured work as a student and then you lost the work, you also still might apply for the regular CERB benefit. That's that $2,000 per month. And if you were working part-time, you definitely should apply for CERB. So you have a variety of options now. You have the CERB benefit, and then you have the Canada Emergency Student Benefits. Very good news for students. Mm -hmm. Welcome news there for sure. All right. There has been a lot of changes to the CERB since it was first announced. Uh, last week, the government announced part-time workers, contract workers, and seasonal workers now qualify. But based on some recent conversations I've had, there still seems to be a lot of confusion. Um, let's Let's say what if someone got laid off in the fall and they still haven't been able to find work, would they be able to apply? So right now it's looking as if that case would not apply. However, what I can recommend here is that if you are on the edge, you're not sure, you should apply for CERB because if you find out as we receive more clarity in the coming weeks, let's say in three weeks that you shouldn't have applied to begin with. You simply don't apply for the next month. So every month you renew your application for CERB. And this is where, again, if you, you weren't sure beforehand, like in this case, you were laid off outside of the period of time that would be qualifying for CERB. Um, and then you find out, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have applied. You can just stop the application after your first month. Mm -hmm. And another concern I've also been hearing, Leslie Ann, is what happens next year at tax season? You know, there's still a lot of fear from people about how much they're going to owe um, on the payments they're receiving now. So first thing, the CERB benefit goes for about four months in total. And so for the max of that, that would be $8,000. What I can tell you here is that your $2,000 per month is not taxed at the source. So you're getting the full $2,000 per month. And next year, you will pay taxes on that. So all government benefits, you do pay taxes on that. Why I mentioned the first part is that it's not a large amount of money. So the amount of tax, what we recommend you set aside is about 10% of that maybe 15 percent and that should do the trick to clear up your tax bill next year bottom line here is you don't have to pay the taxes back till next year we are also still waiting to see how they're going to go about the government's going to go about collecting all that tax mm -hmm. all right leslie mm -hmm. we are out of time but we will post this segment online so if anyone is rushing to uh, grab a pen right now we will post it online so you can watch it again uh, hopefully we can catch up with you next week because still have so many more questions for you that sounds great. Okay, thank you so much, Leslie Ann. Uh, it is 7:54 here on.